Xenia, Ohio, a typical Midwest community nestled in the Miami Valley. Like many small communities in the United States, it has a deep, rich history. It was settled in 1803 by pioneers impressed with the area's fertile farmland and scenic landscape. Xenia, which is Latin for hospitality, takes its name from the ancient Greek city of Xenia, located on the island of Crete. And, as if it was written on the pages of some unthinkable Greek tragedy, a mask of fate befell this seemingly quaint community. In nine minutes, changed the landscape and the lives of thousands. Mr. Weather Radar now shows a tornado developing in northeastern Warren County, taking it from northeastern Warren County into southeastern Montgomery County into central Green County. This storm is severe, massive storm. The track indicated by the hook in our radar screen is now moving into the city of Z. It came virtually without warning. Pounding rain lightning, hail, and a churning monster descending from the sky. With winds blowing at over 300 miles per hour, some people said it sounded like a freight train or a deafening wall of thunder. But all agree, the voice from the sky that day was evil. Cars, trucks, buses, and train cars took flight, landing in backyards, classrooms, and family rooms. The winds peeled back the roofs of buildings like sardine cans, cleaning out the contents within. Trees, including some more than a hundred years old, were uprooted as easily as a child picking a dandelion. It would take only nine minutes to level a city that took 170 years to build and change the lives of nearly 25,000 people forever. I'm Jim Baldrige. On April 3rd, 1974, one of the most powerful tornadoes in history swept through the Miami Valley between Bellbrook and Cedarville. Sitting dead in its path was Xenia. Over the days of April 3rd and 4th, 148 tornadoes ripped their way through 13 states. In all, 330 people were killed and nearly 5,500 were injured. Locally in Xenia, 33 people lost their lives in the storm which experts categorized an F5, the most destructive on the Fujita scale. The destruction in Xenia was unspeakable. Half of the city's structures were leveled. Four schools, including the high school, were decimated. 13 students and an instructor were in the high school's auditorium rehearsing the spring musical, The Boyfriend. One student stepped into the hallway for a drink of water when she spotted the storm out the window bearing down on the school. She yelled to her classmates and they came running to see the funnel cloud. Moments later, the auditorium was leveled and several school buses tossed by the storm came to rest on the stage where they had been standing just moments before. It would have uh, hit just several hours earlier. I mean, it could have, uh, you know, there were 2,000 students in, in Xenia High School back then. And again, it was just uh, a fate, if you will. Uh, but I'm, there's no question in my mind when I viewed the, the pictures and the damage uh, after uh, it was all said and done that, that there would have been massive fatalities and probably uh, I would have been one of them. All the students survived. Ten churches also lay in the path of the storm. At the first church of the Nazarene, 100 preschoolers crouched down in a small basement as the twister roared through their town. Miles back was four at the time and was one of those children in the church. They had us holding hands, walking single file line, singing Jesus Loves Me. We must have sang that song. Gosh, we sang it a lot that day. And I remember being huddled in that basement forever, hands over the head, in the dark, and it seems like there was an adult on top of me at all times. Because I remember I kept saying, I don't want another tomato. I don't want another tomato. That's the only word I could come up with that it sounded like. Dozens of businesses along Detroit Street were turned into rubble, with the store contents dropped throughout the city. Most people caught at work during the storm survived. But that wasn't the case at the a and root beer stand. Five people, including a mother, father, and their small child, lost their lives. 
One person who survived here, though, is Jenny Ho. She was five at the time. I remember a lady coming out and saying, saying there's a tornado, and I didn't know what a tornado was. And then we went, the ladies had come in and take cover, you know, there's a tornado. So we all ran inside the building and remember getting underneath the table or something, we got under something. And just remember hearing noises and just remember seeing things come flying in, look like birds and stuff. And I remember yelling for my mom and that's what I thought. Janie says a guardian angel was with her that day. That angel was Dorothy Rowland, who laid on top of Janie to protect her from the storm. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been here. I feel like she was my guardian angel at that time, and she was there for that reason to save me. I just, if it wasn't for her, I don't believe I would have been here. I just think she just, she's my hero. Dorothy Rowland was one of the five who died at the root beer stand. At the time the storm swept through, a 57-car Penn Central freight train was moving through Zeniac. Thrown around like a child's toy, tons of twisted steel blocked many city streets. At Central State University in Wilberforce, just a few miles east of Xenia, 15 buildings, most of them classrooms, were toppled. The Central State Student Union was spared but damaged. Several students found refuge there from the storm, then emerged afterwards to help the injured. The chaos was unimaginable. Families were separated, and damaged phone lines made it impossible to make immediate contact. Unable to navigate through the debris-strewn streets, people abandoned their cars and took off on foot, searching for their loved ones. And I remember it kept running through my head, why isn't my mom coming to get me? Because a lot of the kids were getting picked up by their parents. And I just kept saying, well, my mom's not coming to get me. What's going on? What's going on? Well, she was trying to get me, but she couldn't get there. Trumbull Street was hit hard by the storm. Five people died. A man and woman, both 82 years old, and three children, eight, seven, and three, all from the same family, lost their lives. Chuck Haynes was four years old when the storm hit. He was at his babysitter's home, also on Trumbull Street. And then the babysitter's husband came in from the outside after he had been watching the neighbors. And to me, he went wild. He went, he grabbed his kids, he grabbed uh, my sister, and started throwing everybody in the basement. And at that time, I didn't have any clue as to what happened or what was going on. And I froze. I didn't move. I didn't run. He snatched me up and put us all down in the basement and pulled the door closed. And then we heard a loud... Uh, thunder and um, after that we dug our way out and at that point that you could tell it was a storm and I asked if it, if it could come back and uh, they said no it can't come back and I remember seeing light sky on one side and dark sky on the other his mother shot an eight millimeter film of the damage in their neighborhood the day after I couldn't understand why my mom was crying when we got out of the basement um, my mom was walking up the road and um, she turned around about halfway up the road and we hollered and waved to her and said we were okay and, um, and she was crying and I couldn't understand why she was crying because uh, I didn't really quite understand what was what was going on coming up you'll see how in the hours following the storm relief efforts begin and how local communities state officials and the president of the United States come to the aid of Xenia. When Xenia 74, nine minutes in April, continues. This weekend only at the Rhodes Furniture Spring Renewal Sale. Make your home blossom with the guaranteed lowest prices and nothing to pay until 2006. The Rhodes Furniture Spring Renewal Sale, right where you live. We are the world's biggest Wheel of Fortune fans. Check this out. Well, we named our kids Pat. And Vanna. And yes, we spin for our dinner. Come on. Come on, Pot Roast. If you love Wheel, you'll love the Wheel of Fortune Instant Game. Win up to $20,000. Plus, there's a second chance drawing for Wheel prize packages or a trip to Hollywood for a guaranteed contestant audition for the TV show. Ohio Lottery Instant Game. More cash, more prizes, more fun. 
Dalton Direct Flooring Centers. Every day, low prices save you money seven days a week. We always offer thousands of top quality carpets and hundreds of floors at rock bottom prices. And today, you can buy with no payments, no interest for 18 months. Pay nothing for 18 months. Plus, incredible everyday values. Level loop carpet from 39 cents a foot. Berbers from 59 cents a foot. Stainmaster carpet from 99 cents a foot. Laminate flooring from 149 a foot and more. For the best floors and the best values, visit your everyday low price leader, Dalton Direct Flooring Centers. We just retired, and our new job is to stay healthy together at Wellness Connection. I've reduced my blood pressure and increased my agility at Wellness Connection. I've lost 50 pounds at Wellness Connection. Heart disease is the number one killer of women. Come to the Wellness Connection for a free blood pressure and cholesterol screening on April 6th and April 19th. Know your numbers. It can save your life. With mattresses from Rhodes Furniture, you'll rest easy knowing you got a better price from a store you trust. Wake up to value. Wake up to Rhodes. We're on the on the south side. Come up. Within hours of the storm, the relief efforts began. People from all over the Miami Valley came to help, moving debris, clothing the disheveled, feeding the weary, and recovering those lost. Almost immediately, the National Guard was on the scene, establishing a command center and working to restore hope and security. Martial law was ordered, and curfews were strictly enforced. The dangers that relief workers and guardsmen encountered were very real and the arduous task of recovery did not come without sacrifice. Three days following the tornado, a fire broke out at Cherry's Furniture Store when a kerosene heater tipped over. Two National Guardsmen were in the basement sleeping and were unable to escape the inferno after spending the last days of their lives saving and serving countless others. Donald Meek was a member of the 178th Fighter Wing which came to the aid of Xenia and was in the furniture store just minutes before the fire erupted. I heard about it when, when I got up to man post and said what happened. And uh, I said, man, I was just there, there in this couch up uh, top of the steps when they said where the flames had come up in that area. It just got through to me how the Lord had seemed to have spared me. It didn't spare them. It, 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 was, it was hard. This is the Arrowhead subdivision, which looked like a war zone when I first arrived here just after the tornado struck. I'd been with WHIO-TV only about 18 months at that point. I anchored the evening news that night, nervously watching our new weather radar as that hook J sign of the tornado made its way out of the southwest towards Xenia. My own home in Bellbrook was also in the storm's path, but it skipped over my neighborhood. My wife and infant daughter huddled under a sink touched down a few miles away, then jumped into the air once again and landed with its full fury here in Arrowhead. Yeah. Went and looked out my back door to see if, if it was what I thought it was, and, and so I just kept looking, and there it was, and it was just getting louder and louder and louder, and so I knew what it was. We, we were uh, staying in the house getting ready to eat supper, and my brother-in-law called us and said there's a tornado on its way, and I went outside, Seeing it swerving around, seeing housetops coming up and everything. And Many state officials came to Xenia to offer assistance and assurances. I interviewed uh, then Ohio Governor rocky, John Gilligan. Uh, All right, Governor Gilligan, what is your assessment of the situation here in Xenia? Well, the tornado evidently went uh, virtually right through the middle of the town uh, from the southwest, uh, moving in a northeasterly direction, and cut a swath maybe three city blocks wide. Even President Richard Nixon came to see what had happened to Xenia. We have received a big lift from coming here, interestingly enough. Uh, people have been very kind to say thank you for coming. Uh, it's, you help us. You help our morale, somebody said to me. Well, let me say that when we come here and find people who have suffered uh, so much uh, in such a devastating way, uh, with the outlook rather bleak, but who are still standing up there tall and strong and saying they're going to see it through, it makes you realize that this country has got a lot of guts. 
It makes you realize that this town is going to live. It makes you realize that this town is going to come back. When Xenia 74, Nine Minutes in April, returns, you'll hear from New Center 7 Chief Meteorologist Jamie Simpson on how great advancements in severe storm prediction have helped save lives. All the day long, whether rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie! The Were you a Rosie or know someone who was? That little gal can do. More than a male can do. Rosie! The Riveter. Share your memories. They could become part of the Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront National Historical Park. Your home is an extension of your style. And no matter what that style is, you'll find it at Sofa Express. We stock over 100 unique sofa styles and enough fabric and leather options to create thousands of custom order choices. Whether you're matching a paint color or a family treasure, our design experts will find the perfect combination to express your style. And custom orders from Sofa Express are delivered in 30 days or less. Fabric, leather, or our exclusive stain-resistant microfiber, we are the specialists. Sofa Express, here today, home tomorrow. Elder Beerman's lowest prices of the season sale starts Friday at 9 a.m. Save 33 to 40 percent on Mrs. Attitude separates by Norton McNaughton, John Paul Richard, and DLG. 300 thread count deep pocket sheet set sale, $54.99 any size. Check your paper for your shopping pass to save even more. Plus, don't miss our Friday and Saturday bonus buys, like this sapphire and diamond accent bracelet and earring set, now $29.99. Shop the lowest prices of the season sale this weekend at Elder Beerman. Smart looks, smart prices. Looking for something that gets everyone charging to the table? Olé! Jose Olé. Made with shredded beef, grilled chicken, real cheese, and authentic seasonings. Good stuff, Mom. Olé! Taste the fiesta. Jose Olé. Don't miss the funniest film in years. You will laugh riotously. With Tom Hanks' best performance since Forrest Gump. Four stars. It's hilarious. <laughs> the Lady Killers. Fasta. Rated R. See it now. After the storm struck with such deadly force, there were so many questions. How could this happen? Where did the storm come from? Why was the warning so short? New Center 7 Chief Meteorologist Jamie Simpson explains how very difficult it was back then to forecast severe weather. Back in 1974, all the radars could do is see where the rain or the snow was. Now, when Gil Whitney saw the tornado on his radar, what he was seeing were the raindrops wrapping around in the circulation of the tornado. And like I said, only a tornado that big, that strong, uh, would show up on the radars. Today, we can still see the rain, we can see the snow, but the new Doppler radars we have can also see how those raindrops are moving within a thunderstorm. And the most important advance from that is that we can start to see the raindrops starting to circulate up in the clouds before the tornado ever forms. And the lead time for a tornado warning in 1974 was about seven minutes. If they were lucky, they would get seven minutes. Today, the lead time for a warning of a tornado is up to 20 minutes. That extra 13 minutes has made an incredible difference in saving lives and saving property in some cases. Some remnants still remain from that fateful day in April 1974. Paul Evans is a farmer and lives on the outskirts of Xenia. His farm was in the path of the tornado. Well, explain to me what that is. That's a piece of roofing off of somebody's house or barn. Been hanging there since 74. How'd you find this? What happened? Well, right here, we're sitting right in the path of the, where the tornado went. That's what's just been hanging there. I never went up to tear it down. I just said, the heck with it. You stay up there. Nature can do strange things to us real fast. Real fast. So, you never know. Coming up, Xenia lives and rises up from the rubble and returns as a growing and prosperous community. The issue, middle class tax cuts. 
John Kerry voted to eliminate the marriage penalty and for a child tax credit. Kerry's economic plan? Roll back tax cuts for the wealthiest 1%, helping pay for a middle class tax cut. Don't reward corporations that export jobs overseas. George Bush, he supported tax breaks for exporting jobs, and he rated Social Security to pay for a tax cut for millionaires. Bush's priorities won't strengthen America. SBC Yahoo DSL saves time versus dial-up, so you can spend less time looking up father and son activities and ordering hobby kits, and more time enjoying them. Get SBC Yahoo DSL for $29.95 a month. Connect two or more computers with SBC Home Networking for just $50. 12-hour sale. That's what really gets me going. I love Steinmart Saturday 12-hour sale. They open at 9 a.m. It's always on Saturday from 9 to 9. You save anywhere from 30 to 60% off. And I shop through two shift changes. You can walk out with shoes. You can get stuff for your house. You can get towels. You can get kids' clothes. First of all, you're getting a savings just because you're shopping at Steinmart. So then you get an additional savings. I love the sale thing. <laughs> Steinmart. Once you go, you get it. I have a lot of clothes, but I made room for more. Liberty Savings Bank is the Miami Valley's outstanding community bank. Liberty Savings Bank is built on a 113-year tradition of meeting our community's needs through the finest personal service. We understand that our most important asset is our customers. And now, announcing Liberty's free checking account. No minimum balance, no per check fee, no monthly or fall below fees, and a free Visa check card. Discover the best kept secret in town. Liberty Savings Bank, our interest is in you. Thirty-three people, ten of them children, died in this tornado. The youngest, a one-month-old infant boy. The oldest, a 98-year-old woman. Nearly 1,600 people were injured. To the people who survived the storm, the names of the dead on this plaque outside Xenia City Hall serve as a reminder of an ordeal that brought the community together, but gives the people a common bond. It was that common bond and bold perseverance that brought this community back from ruin to prosperity. What comes out of tragedies is neighbors helping neighbors, and that is, uh, that's a wonderful thing. And this community does it better than most any other community around. I don't see a lot of people moving out of here. Uh, they just keep rebuilding. I know one family who has rebuilt three times. You know, that says a lot about their faith and strength and courage. We're a close uh, community, and again, that's part of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the draw to uh, Xenia. And it, we are the uh, community of hospitality, and certainly, uh, and we value our relationships and we continue to, to nurture those as the years go by. Though the city is rebuilt and continues to move forward on the path of progress, the spirit of the people is still as strong as it was on that Wednesday in April, 1974. Roger Workman was living in an apartment just across from Xenia High School when the tornado hit. And then, of course, once it was over, we came out of the uh, basement 
and the first two things I seen was uh, the junior high school. And man, I tell you, that <laughs> got to me. But there's more to his story of survival. Janie Hull, the little girl who survived the devastation at the A&W root beer stand, lost her husband in early 2003 to a heart attack. She was in need of another miracle, and through several twists of fate, she was about to get one. Sometimes I don't understand why, you know, God spared me and not the others. But you said that you had an answer to her question of, I don't know why God spared me. <laughs> what is that answer? Well, I, to me, it's the answer to that would be that they spared Janie so she could meet her dad, which I am her dad, and, and I didn't know this for 34 years. And uh, and now my wife, me and Vicki, uh, never had children. And now we got a beautiful daughter and two be <clears throat> beautiful grandsons. Uh, they mean everything to us. And uh, you know, we're very thankful. And in a poetic twist, Paul Evans, the farmer who still lives on the outskirts of Xenia, found a page from a church hymnal floating through his field shortly after the tornado hit. When the world's on fire and the darkness is veiled, the sun, I'll live on. Yes, I'll live on. Men will cry and to the rocks and mountains run. I will live on. Yes, I will live on. Xenia does more than live on. Xenia thrives. The phrase, Xenia lives, was plastered all over the city in the months that followed the tornado. It's only a bumper sticker, but it serves as a reminder of the strength and the determination of those who call the Miami Valley home. <laughs>